Whoa! All right. Just making sure everything's good. Looks like we are good to go. What's up and welcome back to the Razor Blade 18 live unboxing of, or welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech or live stream, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm super excited because I, I don't know for sure if this is going to be my laptop for 2023, but I am leaning towards actually picking the Blade 18 as my laptop for 2023. I had got, I got it in the mail about uh, two days ago. I have been hands-on with it. I have updated a number of things on it. Uh, so and I have played a few games on it now. I've got it ready to go for us to do some gameplay testing. So today's overview, the goal is to be able to um, unbox this guy. We're gonna take the bottom off. We're going to get into Windows. I'm gonna show you the webcam. We're gonna do a speaker test. We're gonna do a display test. We're gonna do a flex test. And then we're gonna load into some benchmarks, Cinebench R23, uh, Time Spy, and then we're gonna undervolt and see if we, what kind of performance we can get with undervolting on Cinebench. And then we're gonna overclock with the RTX 4090 in Time Spy and see how far we can push it, at least a basic overclock and a basic undervolt. Uh, and that I'll also kind of explain how to do it if you decide to do it on your this laptop. I'm gonna try to include undervolting and overclocking in these unboxing videos going forward if I can. So, um, so that said, I did repackage the laptop up to be exactly how it was when I bought it. So we're gonna try to, I'm gonna try to show you basically how it was, except I did apply the Razer pre-order skin that I got. It's like a multicolor uh, 3M cast skin. So it's very precise skin, very high quality skin. We're gonna take a close look at that. I'm gonna give you my feedback on applying that. And, uh, and my, my thoughts on the looks, and you'll be able to get a close up and see what it looks like. So I see we are, I have 20 people already on the stream. We just got started, this is awesome. What's up, Brian on Lowry? So this is gonna be an epic live stream. I will include timestamps as soon as we can get them on here. Usually it takes a few hours because it's a very detailed video with lots of timestamps that you have to get very precisely. Anyway, we're gonna get that all done. I invite you to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on live streams in the future. I also wanna mention that there is a membership program for Gizmo Slip Tech. Now, if you wanna become a member and help support me as a content creator, that also potentially gives you access to purchase my laptop review. My laptops that I buy for review, I test them live on stream and then I'm gonna resell them to members. And so if you want full details on all of that, I can go into that, but basically, I'm gonna autograph the laptop. I'm gonna, there's gonna be a wait list. So the sooner you get signed up as a member, the sooner you get put into the membership queue on that list. And then you'll have access to potentially uh, buying them. I'll be trying to match up. There's, a, there's gonna be a form when you become a member, it's on the community tab. You need to fill that form out. That gives me uh, information on where to, what kind of laptop you're interested in. And uh, we're gonna go through that list in order to, to match up the laptops that I have bought for review and be able to sell those out to you guys. So there'll be a $50 upcharge on the what I paid for the laptop. So the reason for that is because I have to pay someone to manage that program and it does take time to do all of these things. Um, and the laptops are sold as is. So just know that right off the bat. And no pressure to do that. If you just wanna become a member to help support the channel, you can do that as well. Um, or or not, whatever, just enjoy the live streams. No pressure to do anything. I'm just, I'm just all about uh, exploring these laptops, breaking them down and making them easy and hopefully accessible for you guys to understand how to get the most out of them. Um, so, okay, Matthias Bossman says, hey Gizmo, have you installed HW Info? Razer told me that's the problem with the flickering. Many people have with the Blade 18, have you disabled Optimus? Yes, so I disabled, uh, I disabled the advanced Optimus GPU switching, and I'm on the GPU, discrete GPU, and I have yet to see the flickering issue occur after swapping over to just dedicated GPU mode only. Uh, that said, the battery life sucks with dedicated GPU mode only. I was only getting like an hour and a half or two hours of watching a, uh, a Netflix or a Hulu show. We were watching, what were we watching? Um, Gravity Falls last night. Anyway, um, so we got a lot of things to get into. Let's go ahead and start the unboxing. This is all very exciting. Um, I am, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm very excited about this laptop. So, so this laptop comes in a external box and then inside of that box, you get this box and inside of this box, there's another box. So it's a triple box setup. No, this is the second of three boxes. All right. So here's the, here's how it's packaged. 
You've got your power adapter. I believe this is on the top right here. And then you have a secondary box right here. Voila. All right. Now this secondary box has this bubble wrap on it to help protect in case the box gets punctured or gets dropped. And even though my outside box, I don't really want to show you guys my outside box because it has addresses on it. That box was damaged. The internal two boxes were not damaged. So the packaging was good at protecting the laptop. So here is the power adapter. And notice, I'll show you this power adapter side by side with a couple of other competitors' power adapters. Um, the power cable itself that goes into the power adapter is very short. It's only about four feet long. Um, maybe even three and a half feet long. It's not very long. Uh, but the cable that goes from the power adapter to the laptops actually longer than six feet. This is probably, yeah, a little over six feet. So that's, that's really good. You can keep this on the floor and then have the cable come up onto your desk or table. Um, so you don't have to have the power adapter up on your desk. I kind of prefer this... Uh, cable weighting uh, sizing pretty much, but I kind of wish this cable was about a foot longer. That would be a little bit better, I think. Okay. Wow, lots and lots of uh, comments already. Is there a, is the 18 a fingerprint magnet or is this year's model better? So that's one advantage of having the Razer skin. I don't see fingerprints anymore at all. Uh, the, without, the, without the skin on it, it does attract some fingerprints, not severely, but it, it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet, um, especially if you have very oily hands. But overall, it's still, it's still pretty good. Um, it's not as bad as previous generations with their new anti-fingerprint coating. So anyway, let's go ahead and switch cameras up. And all right, so we're gonna go into the main box here now. And let me just adjust the camera angle a little bit here. All right, so I did take a couple of the stickers off that was on the laptop. You can see the actual stickers here. Um, just goes over what's in the GPU. We've got an RTX 4090 with 16 gigs of GDR6 VRAM and the i9-13950HX with 24 cores, 32 threads up to 5.5 gigahertz and vapor chamber cooling with 32 gigs of DDR5, 5,600 megahertz RAM. Um, so very nice. And then this other sticker just shows the display. This one was on the display. 240 hertz, 18 inch QHD plus 2560 by 1600 resolution. And all right, so I guess I gotta rotate it this way. Here is the laptop itself. And notice that the laptop, uh, the packaging is very tight on this box. You don't want this box to get slammed around because you'll probably end up damaging the laptop. Um, and you can already see the skin, uh, but I do have the plastic film over the laptop right now. They, they do have this nice plastic uplift thing so you can lift the laptop out of the box, which is very nice. I like that. And uh, I'm just gonna take the laptop out for a moment and we can take a look at what's inside. So we've got uh, Razer's Go Green with Razer. They're trying to uh, basically make the, the airbags are recyclable instead of, uh, yeah, soy ink. So maybe the ink is uh, better, more biodegradable and more degradable than traditional petroleum ink products. Uh, and, and so if you care about this and then the no chemical glue, and it's wood harvested from sustainable forestry. I don't know, it's, it's, it is the green marketing. It's not necessarily like, it's not, I don't know. I'm, I'm all for more sustainability and that's good. This is a good thing, I think. But anyway, um, this is the package that comes inside the box. Let's go ahead and just open that up and see what's inside. All right, so thank you. Let me zoom in a little bit. Thank you for choosing a Razer system. The dedication we put into engineering, this high performance laptop extends into aftercare. We have committed customer support with them at your disposal. Um, if you have any questions or problems with your Razer laptop, do not return the laptop to your retailer. The fastest way to resolve any issues is to go to support.razer.com. 
And they do have a phone number here. What? That's awesome. Okay, so um, I like that they have this here. I wish, I wish it was on their website, more accessible. Maybe it is now, uh, but it wasn't when I was trying to deal with issues. So what wattage is the video card? Great question, Brad Allen. It's a 175 watt. Uh, in my testing though, with the last couple days having it on hand, it was not going to 175 and staying there consistently. It depends. Um, it, it liked to hover more like 165 to 170 ish in the upper range ish, and sometimes a little below or below that, uh, below or above that. But um, I have seen some people do. I saw a thing online where they modified the driver a little bit, disabling dynamic boost, and then manually raising the power limit so it stay at 175. I'm curious to try that. We're not going to do that today, but it may be possible to get this thing to go 175 nonstop. The temperatures in it are phenomenal. I don't see why it couldn't go to 175 more often. All right. Um, okay, so congratulations. There's no turning back. Everyone knows that it's not just a brute force that wins the battle. It also requires strength and agility. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you do get some stickers, some Razor Chroma stickers, and four gamers by gamers, and then a Razor logo, a couple Razor logos. A microfiber cloth, which you'll need if you don't put a skin on there to, to clean the fingerprints off. You're going to need that. And uh, Luis Garza said, what's the battery life on gaming? Uh, pretty much all of the latest gaming laptops are going to be like about an hour to an hour and a half of gaming. Unless you're really extending it with, you, with using like the integrated Intel uh, GPU, which is going to reduce performance a lot. And then it's all going to be reduced performance on battery. In general, I don't recommend gaming on battery for Windows gaming laptops. Uh, but it's gonna be between an hour and two hours depending on how you optimize it, pretty much. Um, okay, so it just goes over, so this one, this one goes over all of the different ports on the laptop and uh, very nice, very nice explanation of the ports. And when you're setting up the laptop, uh, you know, you want to be able to, you need to plug the power adapter in before you power the laptop on or the laptop won't power on. So make sure you plug the, the, uh, the laptop in. The front indicator LED, when it's white, it means the laptop's asleep. When it's green, it means the laptop is on. When it's red, there's less than 10% of the battery life. And when it's, I think, flashing red, that means less than 3% of the battery life left. All right. So... Very nice. Uh, it's some nice packaging. I'll, uh, <laughs> you're gonna want to save that number probably if you're uh, if you run into any issues with this laptop. So now, and I did I did run into a couple issues with the laptop already. We're gonna go over those today. Uh, there is a screen flickering issue as well as a speaker kind of uh, popping issue, and both of those things I think will be fixable through driver updates and software updates. And I, I don't think it's worth returning the laptop for just those things. Okay, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the boxes away. And let's go ahead and get this thing, oh, we gotta get it unwrapped. Let us unwrap it. All right, so. You can see the skin in all of its glory. And the skin wraps entirely around the laptop. It does not just uh, cover the top lid. And I also want to mention that if you, uh, if you do decide to buy this laptop, uh, there are there's a link to my laptop list that has links to uh, where you can buy this laptop. There's lots of different st online stores uh, that are that have it, and if you do use the links on those on that list, it will help support me as a content creator. So thank you very much if you guys do use those links. And let me just show you that sheet really quick. So here's the sheet, uh, and if you're on the live version, let me switch over to there. You can find the Blade 18 just by searching model. I type in Blade 18, press enter. And here it shows you all the different configurations of the Blade 18. And um, if you click on this configuration, it's the one I got. 
As you can see that you can buy this from Razer, Newegg, Best Buy, BH Photo, and Adorama. And so if this laptop gets sold out at uh, say Razer, you could, you could look at other retailers and find all the potential places to buy this laptop. And uh, that's true for almost all of the RTX 4000 series laptops. Like 99.9% .9 of them are on this list with links to buy them, at least in the United States. And we're working on adding the links to buy them for uh, international affiliate retailers as well. So um, jumping back over, here is the skin. It does look quite delicious. I wanna point out that I did mess up my skin application just a little bit. I have, I caught a little piece of dust under the skin right here. Um, so you wanna make sure, you really wanna make sure that you uh, clean the laptop perfectly and you don't have a windy environment where any dust or any particles can get in there. All right. Um, two six says it looks clean. Yes, it does. Uh, how did I disable dynamic boost? Uh, I do. I did not disable dynamic boost. I was just talking about another post that I saw, and I believe that's in the Nvidia control panel. But you might have to reinstall your drivers and all that stuff. So there's a, there's more to it. There's more to it, Brit Allen, than just that. So okay. All right. Uh, is just Mike says. Is your opinion? What's the best built chassis with the 4090? Um, it's hard to say that yet, that fine detail, like in terms of like, and this best built could mean a lot of things, like is it the most performance? Or are you talking about the most, uh, the best cooling solution? Or are you talking about the most rigid? Because this is probably the most rigid chassis you can get with the RTX 4090. This is incredibly solid. Uh, starting at the top here, let me zoom out a little bit more so you can see everything. Um, so starting at the top, this thing has almost no flex. This is a good amount of pressure I'm pushing down. In the middle of the display, there's a bit of flex because you can't support the display in the middle of the display. Uh, that's gonna be on every single laptop out there. Now this logo, this Razer logo, does light up when the laptop is on. Now, if I flip this up, this does have a little uh, cloth there in, in the keyboard when it comes from the factory, so I put that back there. Um, you can see the skin on this thing actually extends across the whole laptop. Um, so including the touchpad. So there's cutouts for the touchpad. It goes across all of this little intricate details over here. Um, and uh, I also, another thing, I, another way in which I messed up the skin is I forgot to remove the stickers underneath the skin <laughs> before I pressed it down. So you remove these stickers in the bottom right before you, you, you push it down. Uh, Mitchell asked, did I get this today? No, I got this like two days ago and I have been playing with it and testing it during this time. Um, so yeah, and I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying this laptop a lot and I'm, I'm leaning towards taking this laptop as my laptop for this year. Um, so uh, and the, one of the reasons why I decided to open it up and get all the software installed is so that way today in this unboxing, we can be uh, we can be more efficient with how we use our time and I'll be able to maybe squeeze in a few different games, some gameplay on a few different games um, and be able to demonstrate a few different things for you guys. Now, um, I wanna point out the, the display, uh, sorry, the keyboard's brightness is the brightest RGB backlighting I've seen on any laptop so far this year. It's brighter than every, everything else. It's it's very close to what the Alienware M16 has on it, but it's certainly noticeably brighter than the Strix and the Scar. Those uh, backlight, backlight brightness on those keyboards are not as vibrant, um, which is gonna make these backlight keys noticeable in bright environments like in rooms lit with daylight, where you might not be able to see the backlight hardly at all with some of the laptops. Now, um, let's go ahead and get this. Hmm. <laughs> what do we wanna do next? We wanna take the bottom off? I think we're gonna take the bottom off. Uh, before we do that, let's, let's shut it down. Let's shut it back down again. Uh, but uh, before we take the bottom off, I wanna show you guys this laptop stacked up on top of a bunch of other laptops. So you can see the size difference, okay? So this is gonna be very important for context because this Blade 18 is smaller than some of the other 18 inch laptops out there, all right? Uh. 
Okay, so first up, we have the Strix G18. All right, and here is the back corners lined up. Yeah, that's perfectly lined up. All right, so you can see the, uh, the Strix G18 is a bit longer. It's a bit deeper to it. And if we were to hold these up side by side, you can also see the Strix G18 is noticeably thicker. Um, at the front, it's about the same thickness, but at the back, especially when you factor in the rubber feet, it's noticeably thicker. It's, um, it's actually a pretty substantial difference in size overall, I would say, but it's not the kind of thing that would completely change what laptop you buy. It, it is a noticeable thing. It's going to be easier to carry, um, or it's going to be easier to fit in your bags, basically, and easier to carry in your hands. It doesn't feel as big when you're hauling it underneath your arm. Um, let's go ahead and bust out the GT77. Alright. Alright, so the GT77 is a bit on a different side. Okay, so the it's a bit, it's a, the, the GT7, it's, it's a bit awkwardly like rounded on the back, so I'm going to line it up on the front. It's pretty much exactly the same width, almost. Maybe the GT7 is actually a little bit narrower, but, so we're lined up on this side, right here, and you can see how much deeper the GT77 is. It's a very big difference. And for thickness, you can also see the, uh, the Blade 18 is pretty noticeably thinner as well. Now, let's go ahead and bust out the Alienware M16, which is a 16 inch chassis. And I'll actually put the M16 on top this time because it is a little, at least narrower. But uh, you can see that the, <laughs> The, the, M, the, the M16 is actually deeper, even though it's a 16 inch. That's pretty insane that Razer's made it less deep, having a much bigger display. Um, and it is wider though, like it is a wider laptop. And in terms of thickness, the Blade 18 is about the same thickness, but it's very similar, right? It's not a huge difference in terms of thickness. Um, overall, Overall, I'm very impressed with how small the Blade 18 is versus the competition. And uh, we also have the power bricks that we can show side by side. Break out the Blade 16 too. Okay, yeah, I've got the Blade 16, hold on. So here's the Blade 16, and you can see it is a pretty substantial difference in size between the 16 and 18. So right now the back corners are lined up over here. I think that is is the Blade 18 actually thinner than the 16? It's very similar in terms of thickness, but uh, yeah, it's it's. It's quite noticeable. Um, let me show you the screen sizes when they're next to each other, because that's also very important, obviously, too, right? So. It's a very noticeable difference in size. And I, I do have the skin for the 16 inch version here but I haven't put it on there. So uh, that's what the, the matte black looks like that on here without the skin. All right.
Now let's compare power adapter sizes. So So this right here, this is the GT77 power adapter. Um, let me just pull the cable down. So you can see the difference in size. The Alienware M16 uses this same power adapter. Uh, hold on, there we go. All right, so the, the Alienware M16, M18 both use this power adapter. The GT77 uses this power adapter. This is the razor blade power adapter. It is literally probably half the size. It's about the same weight, but just a little bit lighter probably. Um, trying to find my, my Strix G18 power adapter. The Asus adapter is about halfway in between these sizes. It's like a, a, a an in-between, but it must be underneath the box right now or something. It's fine. Okay. I am... So compare with the SCAR-18, that is the same chassis as the Strix G18 that I compared with earlier. So uh, that's the, that's the SCAR-18 comparison as well. Okay, so this is go over here. All right. So let's go ahead and take the bottom off of this machine. Yeah, I can see the skin. The skin is already developing a, a few different blemishes right here, though. It's gonna help protect your scratching, you know? Uh, protect the metal from being scratched. All right, now you need a, a T5, a Torx T5 for this. I have not taken the bottom off of this chassis yet. So you're seeing it live. Um, Danny says, maybe with a little bit larger chassis, the 18 will fare better than the 16. Read an article yesterday from PC Gamer that the Re Legion 7i with 40 was neck and neck with the 16, 4090. Um, so, yeah, th if you're asking about will the Blade 18 outperform the 16, yes. This should have, uh, at least in terms of processor cooling, 10 watts higher out of the box, which is not a lot, but it is, it is a noticeable difference um, in terms of if you were to benchmark it and see the average, like, uh, render times or Cinebench R23 scores, it's going to be slightly better. Now, you, you actually do have unlocking built into the Razer Synapse software now, but I did run into an issue where the power limits would not increase when I set them in Razer Synapse. So I'm not sure exactly the reason why that is the case, but that is the case for me so far. Uh, it's another thing I'm troubleshooting, but I was able to undervolt this sucker, so we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to do that today. From what I'm hearing, the SCAR-18 is the best 4090. Um, I think that it all depends on what you're looking for. The SCAR is one of the best for sure. I would put the SCAR in the top three probably. Like, I would say SCAR-18, SCAR Blade-18, and then the GT77 or GE78. And maybe the Le I don't know, the Legion, maybe the Legion Pro 7i as well. I don't know, then you also have the XMG Neo 17. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If, but if I were spending my money, I would probably go between the Blade 18 or the Scar 18 right now. Maybe the GE 66. So just using my fingernail, 
Let me show you. Just using my fingernail, I've been able to get this uh, started to come up. So you don't need to use any spuger tools, but you do need that T5 screwdriver. And I do want to mention, this is a uh, t-shirt from Into the AM. So if you're into fashion or <laughs> you want some t-shirts, they offer a 10% off with the link in the description down below. They are really high quality t-shirts. Um, and if you do use the link, it is an affiliate link. So it does help support me as a content creator. And uh, I've been wearing their shirts. Like I've been wearing this shirt for about two years now. And it still looks really good. I've washed it a bunch of times. So I'm very impressed with their overall quality. Though I usually do hang dry this instead of uh, washing it in the dry or drying it in the dryer. So am I missing a screw? Because this is not wanting to pop up. The back is not interested in coming up. I don't think I'm missing a screw. All of these screws are out. Come on. Come on. You obviously want to be careful with this. There we go. Okay, so I just had, I had to kind of I had to kind of pull it forward a little bit and then it popped out. So um, beautiful. All right. So let's take a look at the inside of this laptop and see what Razer did, at least as best we can tell. All right. Try to get this set just right, and I got something in the way. Okay. All right. So we have our, I believe, 95 watt hour battery, 91.7 watt hours. Okay. And the two cells are split down the middle with our third fan in the middle. We have our battery disconnector right here. If you need to take the the RAM or the SSDs out and change them out, I recommend you unplug the battery first. You've got your two high power speakers here. There are also additional speakers that are upward firing. So uh, this has a total of six speakers on the system and they sound incredible. We'll do a speaker test here in a little bit. Now you've got your CMOS battery in case you uh, do, to, do a little too much undervolting or you need to reset something. Right there is your CMOS. You got your Wi-Fi adapter right here. And it is an Intel model A, AX something. Here, it's hard to tell with the camera in the way. Um, it's an AX211 NGW. So AX211 Intel Wi-Fi adapter. And um, now, so this is, this is where our RAM is at. And we have... SK Hynek RAM, and it is 16 gigs. Let me see here. Maybe I can read it on this way. Nope, that one's upside down. All right, so I'm going to flip this over so you guys can read it with me. And I'll zoom in. All right, so this is uh, 16 gigs, 1RX8, PC5, 5600. So it's a 1R X8 and it's 16 gigs. So these little black flaps just kind of help with um, protecting the RAM from damage. Uh, and they're kind of like a shroud. Now we have a solid, two solid states. Now this is a two one terabyte SSDs and they are not in RAID zero. Let me zoom out a little. Now these two, these two solid states are not in RAID 0, there are two separate one terabyte drives. It's a little disappointing that it's not in RAID 0, but also that lets you easily swap one of these out, but you won't be able to. I was hoping that it would actually be a two terabyte SSD with an empty drive slot, so it's easy to swap one in. The way it is now, I kind of wish they just shipped it as RAID 0, so that way if you don't upgrade, you get, you know, I don't know. That's just kind of my thought. Anyway, because um, RAID 0 would be a little bit faster, out of the box and originally I believe they were advertising this as a two terabyte SSD with, uh, with only um, one slot being filled instead of two. So that's a little, a little bit disappointing. Now, 
Uh, that said, it's not that big a deal. I'm gonna be swapping in. If I keep this laptop, which I'm thinking right now I will, if I keep this laptop as my laptop, I'll be swapping in two eight terabyte SSDs into here. Not in RAID Zero, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to reformat one of those and get that set up and going for this razor blade if I go that route. Um, I'm gonna do the full benchmarking and testing before I officially decide though. So anyway. Okay, so breaking down what we got going on inside here, we got our third smaller fan. This helps keep the overall chassis cooler than the Blade 16. It really does help. Um, and you wanna make sure that you don't block any of the three fan air intakes. Now, this is your uh, CPU overhead and this is your GPU. Uh, notice that this is one giant vapor chamber. And notice, notice also that there is no sideways exhaust with the thermal design, okay? So uh, there is no exits on the right and left side. So that means that uh, you're not, your mouse hand's not gonna get hot. Um, though I think it does in some ways hinder the potential thermal performance, maybe. Hard to say. But they did that so that they could then fit more ports. Notice that they have all of these ports filled up on the right and left side where the exhaust would be on most gaming laptops. And they have that also, since they moved the ports further down, they were able to put in these bigger, beefier speakers set up. So that's, I think this is a very wise use of space overall for this laptop. Uh, it Giz is the HDMI or Display Port. We're going to talk about the ports here in a little bit. Don't worry. Uh, I'll break down. I'll break them down for you so you can understand what ports do what um, here very soon. So overall, I really like their internal layout. They're very efficient with their space, uh, and this vapor chamber should work really well. Now I've heard the CPU doesn't use liquid metal. Um, I believe the GPU does. Uh, that's what one user reported. I have not taken it off and checked, but. Um, as you'll see, the temperatures in this is actually surprisingly pretty dang good for such a thin laptop that's running this high of a power. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this set up. And I, one other thing I wanna mention about this thermal design all coming out to the back here and not going out the sides is that um, it does a good job of directing the heat away from you as a laptop user. And I was surprised in that uh, I could actually use this laptop really well in my lap while running benchmarks and it didn't feel that hot. I was actually shocked about it because I was like, oh my gosh, this, this metal laptop's gonna be so hot and it's gonna be annoying to deal with um, when doing benchmarks or playing games, but at least when running Cinebench R23 in a 10 minute test, this laptop did not get that hot. I also did Time Spy as well with it when I was in my lab. So um, the key though is you cannot block any of these fans. The fans all need to be uh, remain visible uh, or you know get good airflow into them. And then you wanna put your leg, one going this way, one going this way along the edges. And these areas don't get that hot. The middle of the laptop here is where almost all the heat generation is and it is dissipated really well overall, in my opinion. So we're gonna get these screws started. We're not gonna tighten anything down yet until we're um, making sure everything is flush. Is this, this back area over here, I don't think this back area is actually flush right now. So I'm actually gonna take these screws back out. Um, I think you're gonna wanna make sure the back area is kind of squeezed in there. Like in the same way that it was kind of hard for me to get the back area off. When you're putting this laptop together, you gotta kind of make sure this back area snaps in. Okay, so now we are flush on these back edges. So right here and right here is where you wanna make sure they're flush and fully engaged. Uh, in order to do that, you slide the laptop forward just a little bit to, to slide it out of that slot, and now I can lift it up. And I put it down I put it down and then slide it forward just a little bit. And that, that keeps it everything all nice and tight and flush. Okay. All right, so let's get these screws all back in. These T5 screws can be a little finicky to put back in. But I do like T5 screws because 
you know that you're pretty much never going to strip the screw because the T5, um, the T5 screwdriver basically never skips a beat. It's always going in there like perfectly in sync. Okay, so checking chat. Abba says, I'm not a Legion fan. I work with Dell and sell Dell laptops and Alienware. Interesting. Well, it's good to know whose team you're on. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah, we might have several different... Uh, I've, I've noticed that, that uh, I think my videos have become a little more popular or a little popular with some of the actual manufacturing people. Uh, which is a little surprising. So if you're if you work for a laptop manufacturer, don't be shy. You can be, be you can tell us if you want to. Uh, obviously, you don't have to. Uh, but it's interesting. So um, Asus, I was talking to the rep today, and uh, he gave me some positive news about the Scar 18 and Strix G18. He said that they are actively working on updating the BIOS to allow for more undervolting. And they he said that I was the I helped cause it, is what he said. So, uh, guys, it's really cool to see, and I know that it's not just me, but uh, it's really cool to see Asus changing what they're doing to based on based on reviewer and customer feedback. Because uh, we really wanted to see, I really want to see the option of increasing the power limit a little bit more than 140 for the long, and I also really want to see undervolting. Because I think the Asus. Uh, Scar 18, you know, Scar 16, Strix G16, um, G18, all of those should be able to do some way better temps and, or way better um, Cinebench performance, especially if you can undervolt it. So I can't wait to hopefully get a BIOS update and see what kind of performance we can get. Uh, Abba says, can you unbox the Predator 18 and check its performance? I... It's current Predator 18 and 16 are currently not being sold in the United States to the best of my knowledge. That is why I have not featured them yet. I really want to. So this screw is a little bit difficult to screw in, but I got it all in there. All right, and we should be all flush and good to go now. Um, this laptop is very easy to take apart as long as you have a T5 screwdriver. All right. And I am using this iFixit kit. It costs, I think, $80. It's a nice kit, though. You've got a rotating screwdriver head that's uh, magnetic, so it's easy to grab screws if they fall into the laptop chassis. And you've got every type of head you'll need for the rest of your life, pretty much. You've got spuger tools, uh, which help you take laptop chassis apart when they're difficult to get apart. I do recommend getting some kind of laptop kit. You don't need to get this one. This one's a more expensive one, but I recommend getting something. Um, and there is a link to this exact kit in the description down below if you want to check it out. Um, and if you do use the link, it does help support me. So thank you guys very much. All right, so let's go ahead and get this sucker plugged in. And we'll get booted on. And it's time to do our display test. We'll go over the software that comes with this machine. Um, and then we're gonna go into some performance testing. All of that jazz, all right. Um, now, I did update the background on this Razer Blade 18. I'm not a huge fan of the, of the background that comes with it by default. It's, it's not bad background, but it's just not like, it doesn't have the razor pizzazz that I like. And this one looks amazing when it's reflecting off of the, the laptop's shiny skin and exterior. It enhances my experience with the laptop. So that's why I went ahead and swapped the background out for this one. Uh, Thomas, can you install throttle stop and game with the CPU set to 65 watts? Uh, I am not doing throttle stop. I'm gonna do Intel XTU and the, the, you actually can set the power limits now in the Synapse software. So you don't need throttle stop or Intel XTU any longer, um, in theory. That said, um, the power limits when I apply them do not appear to be 
working correctly, though the undervolting is. So I'm gonna show you um, the settings I'm gonna use to undervolt it here in a little bit. So if you don't wanna miss out on that, um, stick around. So that's gonna be in a little bit here. Our R3D says, in Razor's defense, they have gotten better with customer service. I personally had a good experience with Razor lately. Cool, man. It's good to hear. All right. Um, <laughs> all righty then. We are good to go. So let's show you this, the Razor Synapse software. So this is the home screen. Um, let me zoom in. All right, now you have tabs along the top, allowing you to access the different areas of the software. You also have your dashboard. If you click on the Blade 18, it'll take you into the system. And I really like this function key primary. So if you have function keys activated, then when you press these keys right here, the F1, F2, F3, you're gonna get, you're gonna press F1, F2, F3, F4, whenever you press these. But if you switch the function key, to multimedia keys, then all of these keys become activated for changing like the screen brightness or changing for the volume. And it's, it's, really, it's really nice. I love having quick access to pause, play, fast forward, jump, uh, uh, jump backwards, uh, volume up and down, brightness up and down, keyboard backlight up and down. All of those functionalities are really clutch for me. I really like it. It's a, it's a playbook out right out of Apple, pretty much. So, uh, Levy Gaming says, when you try to undervolt, I suggest trying to downclock the iGPU. The iGPU is currently disabled because we're in discrete GPU only mode, which I activated in the BIOS. So that won't be an issue. Now, um, if, you, if I pop over to Windows Truckpad Properties, we can go to Windows Precision Settings. Um, and right here, you can set sensitivity to be most sensitive, high sensitivity, medium sensitivity, low sensitivity. Um, and this has to do with how easily the, the touchpad, I believe, has palm rejection. Basically, this is your palm rejection setting. And so I set to low sensitivity because I did get some accidental touches. Um, and uh, after spending more time with it in games, I just realized if I wanna make sure I don't accidentally fire a gun or click something wrong because I'm in panic mode in a game or whatever, you know, you lose focus, whatever. I don't want that interrupting me or when I'm typing and I'm using an external mouse, I don't wanna accidentally click around on a Word document. So what you can do is press the FN plus trackpad button and you can see it disables the Razer truck trackpad with a quick hotkey. Um, and so I do like this a lot and I found it to be very helpful, uh, inside of games to prevent the giant touchpad from accidentally touching or activating. Now this enormous touchpad is excellent, but with, with this skin on it, so this touchpad goes all the way around here with this skin on it. I don't like the, the feel of the touchpad as much because it's not as smooth. You've got, it's more like a plasticky surface now with the vinyl on it. Um, and so I actually, I'm gonna take, once I get done filming all the B-roll, I'm gonna take this skin off of here because I don't really like having that on there. It makes it too um, sticky. It doesn't, my, my finger doesn't glide across the surface as much anymore. I do like the click of this, this touchpad, it does feel premium. I wish it was a little bit more tactile, like a little bit more of a shink, like feel to it. It's a little bit mushy of a click to me, but it's, it's, it's still really good. It feels really good and it's a huge touchpad and the touchpad itself feels really smooth and really good. Um, love the touchpad on this machine overall. Um, but if I had any criticisms of it, is I wish it had a better shunk click, so. The trackpad is too huge. Well, that's where you can turn it off and on easily and uh, you know, adjust your palm rejection and, and all of that. But it allows you to do um, your three or four finger gestures a bit easier. I do kind of agree in the sense that you don't really need a touchpad that's this big. It could be about two inches smaller and still be big enough. Um, but having a super large touchpad is kind of cool. Anyway, so uh, Gaming mode allows you to disable the Windows key, disable alt tabbing or alt F4. I just leave that off because I don't, I want to be able to press the Windows key. 
inside of CPU overclocking. So this is the performance section of Synapse now, and this is the updated section. Let me zoom in so it's a little easier for you to see. Um, right here we have balanced mode. You can set the fans to whatever you want them to be. Now this severely downclocks your CPU and GPU to like a middle low level of performance. But if you have the fans on high with manual mode, basically it helps cool the system down, which I do like that a lot. It helps it helps keep the overall chassis cooler. So if you if you got headphones on and you're playing an esports game, you can keep the the keyboard and overall chassis fairly cool, or maybe just a little bit warm. Um, better than the other modes, I think, in terms of temperature. Um, how to right click, you just click the right side, the lower right side of the touchpad, um, and then that's how it right kicks. Uh, Double David, how hot does the keyboard palm rest and trackpad get? Uh, it all depends on your settings, okay? So uh, this one does not get as hot as the Blade 16. The Blade 16 does not have the third fan. This has the third fan, and it does help keep the overall chassis cooler. Now, I have the fans on manual, on maximum right now, and the fans are like, as loud as your typical gaming laptop on medium fan, I would say. So right now, probably 51, 52 decibels, somewhere in that range. At least like a foot in front of the laptop is what how I measure it. Um, and if you have it on auto, usually you don't hear the fan spin up at all. Silent mode will keep the laptop quiet even when you're rendering and doing other things, but it's gonna significantly increase or sorry, it's gonna significantly decrease your performance to be able to keep temperatures in check. Now in custom mode, you can set your priority for the CPU from low, medium, high, and your GPU on low, medium, and high. And if you put this to boost and then enable CPU overclocking, it actually gives you a warning. You have to, in order to do this, in order to undervolt and control your power limits, you need to disable core isolation. So this is, you gotta search on your windows, um, click the Windows search button, and then type in core. You'll, you'll, core. you'll click core isolation, you'll have to disable that. That that does reduce your overall Windows security by a little bit. Um, then the other thing you have to disable is your, uh, so I typed in wind, and it came up with turn windows features on and off. Um, but basically this is what you wanna get to, turn windows features on and off, and you'll need to disable your virtual machine platform right here. You'll need to disable that, otherwise Intel XQ can't run. So uh, you disable those two things, you restart your machine, um, and then you have your, your undervolting controls unlocked for the Blade 18. So right here, it warns you, Altering clock frequency or voltage may reduce system stability or the life of the system, so be cautious. If you do this correctly, I think it should increase the life of your system. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, enable this and notice our settings that, we, that Synapse gives us. Um, we've got a voltage offset. We can set this up and down, up to minus 500 and plus 500. Don't go to the maximums. You will reach instability very quickly. Um, but ultimately, these aren't enough controls, I think, to properly undervolt your system. You need to be able to undervolt the cache and your e-cores as well. So this is not going to suffice it. If you want to do proper undervolting, to do proper undervolting, you're going to need Intel XTU. So you're going to need to download that. I already installed it. But if you want to download that directly from Intel's website. And here we are, all right? So inside of Intel XTU, this is, we're gonna do this here in a moment, but I'm just gonna show you the basics of what, what I change. The core voltage setting right here, I wanna make sure you guys can see it. Core voltage setting, um, it's actually not that one, it's the core voltage offset right here. Core voltage offset, you'll wanna set that um, I, most i9 CPUs right now I'm seeing can do at least a minus 100 millivolt undervolt. I've yet to see any that can't, but there may be some out there. So um, be cautious. And obviously if you do any undervolting or overclocking, it's completely at your own risk. 
that said, making these changes, I have found them to be safe for my laptops. I have not run into any permanent damage, any hardware damage, and I have undervolted 50 laptops probably. So it just depends. Anyway, um, all right. Now, um, so you, so the, there's three things that you want to make sure if you undervolt, you want to up to, uh, undervolt these three things. One is your core voltage offset. So uh, I've been able to undervolt this up to minus 125 pretty consistently. So I would set that to minus 125. Then I would go down to our efficiency cores voltage offset, all right? And I was able to do this to like minus 100. I haven't pushed these to the max yet, but I was able to do minus 100, no problem. And the core voltage cache, core processor cache voltage offset. This one makes a big difference and is a bit more sensitive than the, the cores themselves actually. So uh, this one, I was experiencing crashes at 100, but I was successfully getting this up to 90 without crashes yet. But there may, they may still be unstable. I haven't done enough testing yet, especially you need to do real workloads, real gaming workloads, as well as real, um, like if you render videos for a living, render videos, you know, cause an actual AV workload can be more severe than Cinebench for testing stability. So, all right, so I went ahead and applied that undervolt. So now we have a minus 125 on the core voltage, minus, uh, 90 on the cache voltage and minus 100 on the efficiency cores voltage. All right. So, um, beautiful. Now, if you do play with these settings for the GPU low, medium and high GPU and CPU low, medium, high, I noticed that inside of Hogwarts, it would basically power limit at different levels. I think low on the GPU was like 110, medium was like 135, and then high was pushing it as high as it could go, like 165 to 175. And then the, the CPU low was 35 watts, the medium was like around 50, and then the high end boost was like 50 to like 75 watts in that range. So, um, so yeah. Now I wanna point out that the power limits currently are not applying. I can't get the power limit to go above 130 for the short and 120 for the long. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to get that fixed in a driver update or something like that in the near future. We'll, we'll go over that when we start doing Cinebench R23 tests. For the display, you can set the refresh rate at 30, 48, 60, 120, and 240 hertz. And you can also have it automatically switch to 60 hertz when you're on battery mode. Now, I had problems with the display not going back to 240 hertz when plugging the laptop back in. So I ended up turning the switch back off. So I'm hoping, again, a software update is gonna fix that. I don't think it's that big of a deal. You're gonna get more battery life probably like a half hour to an hour longer switching to 60 hertz. So if you're trying to maximize your battery life, definitely wanna do that. Now, um, definitely wanna use 60 hertz if you're trying to maximize that battery life. If you're just doing a quick one, you don't have to worry about that. For battery health, you can reduce the charge of the batteries to all the way down to 50% or up to 80%. So 80% is the long-term longevity. If you wanted the laptop to last as long as possible and you're using the battery pretty often, I would set it to 80 or 100, but you just don't wanna leave it at 100 all the time, 24 seven, because it does damage lithium ion batteries, keeping them at 100%. If you change this down to 50, that's gonna be your best long-term viability. If you are not gonna use the battery for a long time, switch down to 50. If you know you're gonna start using the battery that day or later this week, you can disable it and go all the way to 100 for those days that you're gonna use the full battery. Um, use it, occasionally charging all the way to 100% doesn't damage the lithium battery, ion, lithium ion batteries much, but uh, leaving them at 100% all the time does damage the battery. So that's why I recommend utilizing this feature to increase the longevity of your battery. For lighting modes, you can set the brightness of the system lighting. You, do, you can set the logo to, on the back to be static, breathing, or off. And you can change the lighting so that uh, when it's on battery mode, it can reduce how bright it is. And then there's also um, a number of different effects you can use here. Um, and we'll go over those here in a moment. I'm gonna check chat real quick. Um, you can always replace the battery though. Yes, you can, but uh, if, 
if you don't want to have to replace it, lithium ion batteries, when properly maintained, should last 10 years or longer. So, you know, all these people that have had to replace their battery in their laptops for so many years now, it's just because they're charging it to 100%. If you just charge it to 50% or 80% and keep it there, typically, just keeping it at 80% should extend the life of that battery much, much longer. 50%, in theory, could let the battery survive for like 20 years or something if all goes well. But but yeah, so that's why I that's why all these manufacturers have started adding in limiting your battery charge. You know, like Lenovo's does this now. I think MSI does this now. A lot of different companies have added this feature because it's it's very useful for making the batteries last longer. Um, okay. Now for um, for the system brightness let, or the the system lighting, let's go ahead and go over all the different the all the different keyboard. I'm gonna try to turn it so you can see the keyboard a little better. And I'll go up and then down a little bit. All right, so we're gonna go over all the different types. So ambient awareness, this utilizes um, whatever's on your screen to change the color. Audio meter should use uh, something like whatever music is being played. I'm not doing that right now, but uh, yeah. So breathing lets you change between one to two colors. You can also have it go to a random color every time it comes back. So that's what I have right now. And then you have fire. This is a pretty sweet like yellow and red looking backlight. Reactive. This is, I believe, yeah. So this is whenever you touch a key, it switches. And I just changed it to fire, but... Um, Basically, it'll light up. With reactive, it'll light up when you type a key. Uh, Ripple allows you to, I keep changing the key. Let's see here, is that better? Okay, so Ripple allows, uh, Ripple's out from whenever you type, which looks pretty cool. And you can change the color as well. That's, that is so cool. Anyway, all right, so spectrum cycling, this allows the color to all be one color, but it constantly is shifting. Starlight is the different colors jumping around. Um, and you can have it be a mixture of two different colors if you want. And then static allows you to just make the keyboard like green or red or whatever color you want it to be. Wave is a constant wave cycle. And this is a little faster than I want. Um, and then a wheel allows it to circle in a, from the central point of the keyboard all the way around in a circle. Um, if we go to advanced effects, this is what I'm doing. I'm, I went into advanced effects and slowed wave down. So I have a little bit slower wave, basically. So I have in here a wave. And then you can change the properties in here. Um, at least the default wave in here is slower. I don't think I, all of this has been grayed out for me. I'm not sure why yet. I haven't spent enough time messing with these settings. But uh, basically the default wave inside of the Chroma Studio goes slower, so that's the one I'm using. Um, and I think it looks the coolest. I'm not sure if you guys can, is that? So that's the Chroma Studio. You can customize each individual key however you want. Um, Lost Knight asks, what's the GPU wattage? 175. All right, so um, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's that's basically the new Synapse, and it's really impressive. I still think there are some improvements they can make on Synapse here. Um, one of them would be going into the performance tab here. We want core voltage offset, we want cache offset, and we want the E cores offset. We want all three of those in here at the minimum. And then we need to have this working properly because um, right now the power limits are not working properly. And then I also want to be able to have a button that says, uh, max fans. Basically, I want to be able to always run max fans, not just in balanced mode, but also in custom mode, especially if I'm overclocking. And I want to go for the most performance. Having the ability to turn on max fans in any mode is really useful. Plus, even if I'm just using a Word document, in general, with the laptop on my lap, I want to be able to turn on max fans to keep that chassis cool on my lap. So, uh, when you're on battery mode, you cannot activate max fans, and that is that sucks. I really want to be able to do a, a, a max fan boost at any time in whatever mode I'm in, and not just in balanced mode when I'm plugged in. Um, that would be my feedback currently with the Synapse system. 
Overall, I love the direction they're going with Synapse. It's been a big improvement compared to previous versions. Um, and I love that, Ali uh, that Razer is letting us overclock and undervolt our CPUs now, uh, which is unheard of before for Razer products. Um, all right. This battery lasts 10 years. So a monkey, um, lithium ion batteries in general are designed to last for 10 years of usage. That's what we have in our gaming laptops. That's what it should be for most gaming laptops on average. If, if the wattage were to be kept or like the overall charge were to be kept at 50% over the long haul for most of the time. If you're keeping it at 100% rating all the time, you're not gonna get 10 years of usage. You're probably only gonna get two or three years of usage before you see significant battery degradation. So just that's that's my feedback. Take it or leave it, whatever you wanna. If you don't wanna believe me, that's fine. I don't really care. Uh, but uh, that's what I, I know. All right, so let's go ahead and do a speaker test. I gotta get logged in. Oh, let's, I wanna talk about the, uh, let's do speaker test, then we'll do the display test. It is really a fantastic display. We're gonna do the Spider 5 Elite display test here in a moment. So, um, let me sign in. And I will also say that uh, the keyboard actually has a pretty nice a pretty nice feel to it. I like the keyboard. Um, in terms of actually typing on it, it's it's a very nice feel. I just wish the, the arrow keys were full size arrow keys and I wish that they had, I know that probably switching to a number pad on this is probably gonna hurt the speaker quality. So that's, that's the main downside or make the laptop a little larger maybe. Cause based on the internal design, adding a number pad is probably gonna mess some things up. So that's probably why they don't do a number pad, so I kinda understand. But um, the part of me that likes the keyboard setup, especially too, is because you can take change those top rows and turn them into multimedia keys. I love that feature. Not all the laptops can do that through software. So, um, all right, so we're ready to do our speaker test. Let's go ahead and back the sucker up. And I'm gonna put the microphone about a foot in front of the laptop like I do in all of these unboxing videos. And we're gonna play some music, okay? So just to confirm the, ma the, the battery life is current, or the, the speaker is at 100% currently. The brightness is actually only at 60% because if I have the brightness to max, it like blows out the camera a bit too much. So <laughs> I have to reduce the brightness a bit. This is a very bright display. All right, so. Here we go. So we're about a foot in front of the laptop now. Let's go ahead and play three or four different songs.
Okay, so if you couldn't tell from that speaker test, the speakers on this are phenomenal. It's the best gaming laptop speakers I think I've ever heard. They're very loud, they have punchy bass, they have clear mids and highs. It's not perfectly clear. It's not quite as good as a MacBook Pro speakers, but it's so close. It is the closest I've seen or heard on a gaming laptop so far. Um, and if you want really good speakers, this is phenomenal. And I also wanna point out, the spatial audio is also next level. Um, this, like when you're playing a first person shooter like Apex Legends, you can clearly hear left and right audio separation. Um, they've got some kind of spatial audio um, software that does a good job. So basically the way it works is the speakers, when, when, a, when you've got someone in front of you, in Apex Legends, the speaker's sound will come through both of these up-firing speakers, but then let's say a grenade goes off to your left, then you'll only get that grenade sound coming out your like bottom left speaker. So it literally hears like the grenade is to the left of your body when the grenade goes off. Um, so audio separation is fantastic, and the spatial audio is very real, and I think it's even better than the Blade 16, though the Blade 16 also had audio separation and spatial sound. The one thing is I've ran into with the speakers is that because of this spatial setup they've got going on, it's kind of a surround sound type of a feel. When I was watching uh, shows last night, I was watching uh, Gravity Falls on, in bed with this, it would be awkward because when there was supposed to be left left side sound or something, the sound would suddenly come from the left side under speaker, which maybe was blocked by a like a, my chest or something because the laptop was on my chest. Uh, the sound would be muffled all of a sudden. so. I want to be able to turn spatial audio off and on as I need it, um, just because it sounded really awkward when I was watching a TV show in bed, because that that basically the under-firing speakers became muffled. So um, yeah, so that's my feedback on the speakers. Really phenomenal. The best ones you can buy so far that I've heard this year. We'll see. Okay. Checking chat. JC asks, how is the bass in person? The bass is clear, it's noticeable, and it's punchy. It's it's solid. And, um, and the mids and the highs are also very clear. But I think the one area where this thing could get better is that when you have the volume to 100%, the, the highs and the mids, really the highs especially, can kind of come apart a little bit. The clarity is not quite as good as what you get on like the MacBook Pro for 100% volume at max. So um, overall though, I love the speakers. They're the best speakers I've seen in a gaming laptop in a long time. Um, all right. Okay, so uh, next up, we're gonna do the display test. Let's bust it out. So I'm not sure if the spider, I think I need to, I need to, I think I need to install the, the analysis software here. Um, so give me a moment, we'll get this installed. And we'll do our nits brightness and color gamut test. Hey Gizmo, this display versus the Strix Scar. So they're very, very similar, but uh, this display, I believe, has a higher rated nits. I haven't tested it yet, um, but they're they're so close that it's not gonna be a noticeable, significant difference, in my opinion. So overall, um, the display has very quick response rate. I went in, I played a couple matches of Apex Legends and the first match I played, I got five kills and my team won. So I was like, sweet, <laughs> this, this display is awesome. You know, you can tell that it, it's a very fast response rate with minimal input lag. Uh, and I was averaging, I think 287 frames per second in that Apex Legends match. So it was, um, it was hitting above the 240 hertz on average, but my 1% lows were still below 240. I think it was like 100 and, I think 1% lows were like 140 or something. So 
Yeah. The Alienware X16 has six speakers, two tweeters, and four subs. Yeah, there are going to be some other good speakers this year for gaming laptops. I have not tested them all. I'm not saying this is definitively the best. It's just the best I have tested in a gaming laptop so far, aside from the MacBook Pro. That's what, to the best of my memory and experience. It's really, really great speakers. <clears throat> okay. We are ready to launch the Spider Fun Elite. I need to get the get it plugged in here. I'm gonna change the camera angle. And um, so I'm really curious about the what what brightness we're gonna get on this. Um, I think we're going to get over 500. I think. We'll see. Uh, okay. I have to put the key in here for the Spider 5 Elite. There we go. All right. So we're gonna go to brightness and contrast and our color gamut. We should be at maximum brightness, I believe. And it is, <laughs> it is a very bright and very vibrant display, for sure. The one thing I can, I immediately noticed when I switched between the MSI GT77 and this Blade 18 is that the GT77 was A, a little bit brighter, and B, had higher contrast levels. Those were, immediately noticeable to me uh, when I switched between the laptops. But that said, this display is still really fantastic. All right, so I don't know why our multimedia keys, oh, we set it to multimedia. Key. I need to switch this to back to media keys. There we go, all right. Can I, oh, we did not have the brightness at max there. So we gotta restart this test. Um, we're going to cancel it and we're just going to restart it again. All right. So we have brightness at 100% now. Do it again. Can you increase the power limits via XTU or is it completely disabled? I can change them in Intel XTU, but they were not actually changing when I was measuring the, the wattages in benchmarks. So um, I think the BIOS still is locking them down, but they're supposed to be unlocked. Um, that's the weird part. So <clears throat> I think it needs a, another software update. Maybe I need to, maybe there'll be a BIOS update or, or something, you know? So we're setting the brightness to zero. We'll see what our brightness is and our contrast is when you turn the brightness all the way down on this display. It is very bright, even on the lowest settings when I was looking, watching TV <laughs> on it last night in bed, so. Uh, Dan asks, will you be doing a comparison between all the 4090 laptops or something like that? I will be doing a comparisons between a lot of them, including benchmark battles, um, benchmark side-by-sides. Um, I'm thinking of doing a speaker comparison um, compilation. I'm thinking of doing um, some actual just full talking about all the details on all these different laptops. Uh, and then I'm gonna try to do individual review videos and there's just so much I wanna do. I need to hire one more video editor and um, 
Yeah, I need to hire one more video editor and probably uh, one more person to help with the membership program. So the live stream memberships are now live. People can join that. Uh, and if you do join it, you get on the wait list to join the um, review unit resale program that I'm doing. So that way I can buy tons of laptops and review them and resell them. So there's gonna be an announcement video on all of that soon, but if you wanna jump the gun and get into the wait list sooner, you can go ahead and join now. So, Matthew says, my Blade 18 has 543 nits measured. My Blade 16 only has 498. Interesting. Well, we'll find out here what this one gets in just a moment. All right, here we go. Now, as always, for the color gamut test, I say that Yeah, um, that should be working now. Let me go to the GH5 and make sure that's working. Cool, all right. So um, the one thing I always mention when I'm looking at these display results is that uh, you can't trust these display results to be as accurate because it always under represents the Adobe and P3 color gamut by a little bit. Um, I need to get a display checker tool. I actually have another one. I tried using it, I need to do more testing and learn more about it to be able to fully use it for testing. So I haven't switched over to it yet, but I do have another one right over there. Um, so just know that this has rated 100% sRGB, 91% Adobe RGB, 90% of the P3 color, P3 color gamut. And realistically, it's probably um, more accurate to say that it's 100% P3, maybe 95% Adobe or something like that, or maybe 100% Adobe. So for our brightness, we got 27 nits 27.5 nits at the 0% brightness setting uh, with a really high contrast level of 27,000. Now at the highest brightness setting, we got 557 nits brightness with 840 to one contrast ratio. So the contrast ratio is not super high, but that's still pretty good. Um, and I also did notice that my display does have some backlight bleed. So let's go uh, open up the... Uh, I've got a file here. Let me pull up the file and we can take a look at an all black image. Just give me a second to put this away. All right. So the, um, this screen does have some backlight bleed. It's not atrocious, but it's not great. It's kind of an in-between unit, I think. Uh, has Razer said anything about adding 4K display options to the Blade 18? They have not, Techni Technicolor Tube. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they add them as available uh, at a later date, uh, simply because why not? Give people more options. But for now, I think they're trying to you know, minimize their costs by, um, you know, uh, they're trying to minimize their, they're trying to, I guess, maximize their efficiency for bringing the product to market. So they're trying to just do these QHD 240 hertz displays right now. Um, and um, let's go ahead and go full screen with this. And let me go ahead and turn the lights off here and see if you guys can see the backlight bleed on this unit.
It's kind of hard with my projector on. Yeah, I'm gonna have to turn the projector off too. So I've got a 4K projector behind me. So there you can see the backlight bleed. There is some in the corners here. It's not, it's not super noticeable, but it is, it is something that I do notice. So I'll try turning these lights off too. And I'll try turning up my exposure. There, that should show you the backlight bleed. We got a little bit in the top corner, just a little bit in almost every corner, but it's not that severe. We've got a monitor on behind me too, so it's not super obvious. There, that's probably about as good as a, of a backlight bleed example as I can get you um, in this type of environment. But yeah, so there you go. So we got some over here. We got a little bit along the top and a little bit in the corners here, but it's not noticeable at all in typical usage um, unless it's maybe a dark movie environment. Cool. All right. So there's your display test. There's your speaker test. Um, let's go over the keyboard and trackpad in a little bit more detail. So, um, so this trackpad, I believe is seven and a half inches wide. It's a really big trackpad. If you want to right click, you tap the right anywhere on the right side, like basically anywhere over here is a right click. Left click can be anywhere. You can also tap uh, for a single tap or you can double tap to do a right click. So if I bring the brightness back down in line, all right. So I found I found myself tapping actually without actually physically pressing as much. This actually this actually works really well for for controlling the mouse here. Um, and with the vinyl, I didn't like it as much. I, I actually preferred the touchpad with no vinyl on it. It's it glides more easily with the glass because uh, now it feels like more like plastic. Okay. Now for the, the actual keyboard keys themselves, they have a decent amount of travel. Let me turn the exposure back up a little bit. These have a decent amount of travel. They have good feel. These whole top section becomes function keys. And then these arrow keys, if you wanted to use home and page up, page down, what you do is you press the FN key FN key plus the arrow key to get your home end page up, page downs. So page up is the up arrow, down arrow, um, and, and, and then home. And uh, yeah, so it works fine uh, in a pinch once you get used to it. I just wish the arrow keys were also full size arrow keys. That's probably like, I feel like a razor should definitely do that in the future. Put some full size arrow keys there instead of these little mini ones, which you end up accidentally uh, touching pretty often. Um, Two finger tap should also be right click. That is correct, Dar Darjin. Um, and uh, the key like I said earlier in the live stream, the keyboard brightness is phenomenal. The keyboard itself, uh, backlight on the keyboard looks just gorgeous uh, when you're using it. Now, um, let's do a webcam. So this so this environment I'm in right now is a fairly decent studio lit environment. It's not super bright right now, but uh, let's go ahead and do a test. Ooh. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up those pictures. Um, I'll kind of zoom in. The detail is, is not amazing, but I feel like it's pretty good especially for a webcam. If you're gonna use a small window, like, I mean, look at the detail on the GH5, it's very clear. Um, the hair detail and fine detail around the hair could be improved. I, I still think webcams can get better, but this is a nice step in the right direction and much more usable than the average webcam on a gaming laptop. So 
kudos to Razor there. Um, I I'd say still still shoot to get it, to make it better. I would give it an eight out of ten. The details and colors and brightness could still be better, um, but still still a very good webcam, an excellent webcam compared to all the competition. But it's it's way better than any other gaming laptop. It's much closer to what you're gonna get with like a um, a face cam on uh, like a MacBook, and maybe not quite that good, but it's pretty close. I would say MacBooks still have slightly better quality, but it's pretty close. Now, I'd have to actually see it side by side to know for sure one way or the other. Okay. Um, so, let's go ahead. I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, flex test around the keyboard itself. Let's do that. All right, so um, starting on the right side, and I'm gonna turn the brightness down so you guys can see <laughs> this a little bit better. All right, so that's brightness on the that's brightness on the display all the way down to zero right now. <laughs> all right, so on the right side, no flex, no flex, no flex. There's obviously flex on the key on the touchpad because the touchpad goes down, but along the edge here, there's no flex. It's all rigid, um, rigid, super rigid, rigid, rigid. A tiny bit of flex, not much, just a tiny little bit of flex. Completely rigid, 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 rigid. Going through the middle now, a bit of flex. A bit of flex that could probably use a little more reinforcement in the middle underneath the chassis, but it's still very, very minimal flex compared to most laptops. Uh, I don't know, Very, it's, it's minimal flex. There's st it's still a decent amount of flex though. It's not like it's f without flex in the middle. Uh, going through the keyboard itself, uh, just a little bit of flex through the keyboard. Overall, excellent chassis rigidity as you'd expect from a unibody aluminum metal chassis. All right, so pulling the laptop in closer now. Let's go ahead and up the brightness a little bit. We'll go about halfway up the brightness. That's only halfway up the brightness right there. Um, so let's go ahead and do some Cinebench now. All right. So Cinebench R23, this is a uh, tool designed to give you rust, rough estimate on CPU performance for video workloads like... Um, you know, audio video rendering type of workloads, basically. All right. So uh, it's important to know that this is not as taxing as those, but it's pretty close. And we are currently in an undervolt. Okay. And I, this, I'm at a, I'm at a reasonable level for the undervolt, one in which I think is stable. I believe is stable. Um, and so it's let's go. I'll pop back into Intel XDU to show you what the settings are again. So for the undervolt, we're at minus 125 on the cores, the P cores, the main cores. And then we are at minus 90 millivolts on the cache uh, slash ring, basically. And then we have efficiency cores cache at minus 100 millivolts, okay? So uh, we should have, let me just make sure we have nothing else going on in the background. Looks like Edge browser was taking up some resources. Let's close that down. Let's close Spotify down. Let's close Synapse down. We wanna make sure, I think in performance, we should be good to go. Yeah, we're set everything to high. Um, and we have the GPU overclocking enabled right now. Let's go ahead and do a single run and see what we get. Um, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. And oh, we need to open up HW Info. I'll let this one finish though. Uh, I heard Strix had bad coral wine issues. The only thing that stopped me from purchasing. It's gonna vary from unit to unit, BT, KT. Um, and uh, like the Strix G18 I had had coil wine. The Scar 18 I had did not uh, have hardly any coil wine. So uh, that said, Asus was gonna modify the fans to be a little bit better. So there's our initial score, 31,000. 363, very impressive, very impressive for such a thin laptop um, that's a unibody chassis. And also notice, can you hear the fans? The fans, there's there's hardly any fan noise going on right now. And we only ran it once, the fans will ramp up, but I got it, I'm really impressed with how responsive the fans are. They pretty much immediately come on as soon as the uh, load begins and then they go away very quickly as well. 
uh, and they don't get excessively loud. They're definitely quieter than your average laptop fans. They're not perfectly quiet. They're definitely noticeable, but still quieter. Uh, sounds loud on this vid. I have another fan next to me that's blowing air into this room. Um, so that if you're hearing a fan right now, that's the fan you're hearing. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, if I close the door, you'll hear no fans. There. See, no fans now. Um, and let me run it again so you can hear kind of hear the fans. I'm going to hold this down right next to the... Uh, so where the fans are, so you can hear them as they come on. As you can see, it's it's pretty it's pretty minimal fan noise, and this is me holding it about where your head would be. So overall, I'm just extremely impressed with the uh, the fan applications in this machine. It's it's definitely quieter implementation than your average ones. Okay, so for the Blade 16, or sorry, for the Blade 18, for our initial undervolting, we could probably undervolt this sucker more. We got 31. Uh, 588. Eight. Let's go with a 10 minutes throttle test and see what we get. And we'll also look at our uh, HW info information here. All right. So let me make sure that we can see everything. Um, and I need to raise up the back of the laptop like I do with all the different laptops. I'm gonna to need to change the battery on this camera as well. But uh, as you can see so far, we are averaging 4.3 or 4.2 right now. 4.2 to 4.3 gigahertz um, on our P cores and 3.5 gigahertz on our E cores. Going down here to our, our uh, stats here, you can see that we are at 130 watts of continual usage right now. This is before it uh, goes down to 120. If I keep this, will I upgrade the RAM? Probably not. I don't really need more than 32 gigs of RAM. 32 is good enough for me. Um, so now it's dropping down to the 120 watts range. And notice our temps on the, on the package power, like on our, uh, our CPU package is 89. And our temps on the cores right now are averaging 82. Very impressive. Very impressive. So I've opened the door again, so there's gonna be um, the fan from the Blade 18 as well as my other fan in here. I just, uh, this room tends to heat up <laughs> if I don't keep a fan blowing air into it. So how are we doing? Let's check our cores. So our average core speed right now is 4.199. And that's better than what we were getting on the Strix G18, right? Like we were going, I believe around 4.05 on the Strix G18. And that had a higher power limit of 140 watts. Um, and this is doing 120 watts, but with an undervolt, it is pushing our clock speeds up to a higher level. So I'm expecting we're gonna get even better performance than the Strix G18 in this 10 minute test, but not by much. Just, it should be, I, I think this 10 minute test should give us right around 30,000, maybe a little over or a little under 30,000. Um, so guys, please ask any questions in chat while we're doing on this, uh, while we're waiting on this uh, Cinebench test. Um, let's, Keep, keep the questions coming, all right? So uh, let's check chat. 
If you keep it, will you upgrade the RAM? Like I said, no, I don't think so. Plus, if you go above 32 gigs of RAM, you go to 64 gigs of RAM, um, a lot of those kits don't maintain 5600 for the RAM speed. And I would rather have 5600 RAM if I can, because um, it should, in theory, boost eSports games, CPU-bound game performance um, by a little bit, maybe a three, three to 5% or something. So, um, and, that, and the RAM speed is a factor for me when I'm picking a laptop this year, I do want 5,600 uh, RAM speed if I can get it, all right? So DJ Maddox says, what makes the Razer so darn expensive? Uh, so the, it's a combination of a few different things. You've got an upgraded webcam. You've got upgraded speakers compared to the competition. You've got the unibody CNC aluminum chassis. That's probably the biggest extra cost for the Razer Blade 18. Um, you've got the big, enormous touchpad, uh, and then you have the better keyboard backlighting, and then you've got the engineering that goes into it. There's, this is a complex device to engineer into something this small. So all of that is what factors into the price, and I do feel like you're getting your money's worth for those premium features, if you can swing the high price point. But I, I think that the key here is, this is not optimal, perfect performance for the dollar. You're gonna get more if you're willing to tw tweak and tune something um, like the Strix G18. That's gonna be a way better bang for the buck. And uh, you're gonna get more performance from like the Alienware M16 for the money, for, for the money on a per dollar basis. Um, and you're probably gonna get even better bang for the buck if you go cheaper, even to $1,500 or $1,000 laptops this year. The RTX 4050, 4060 looks like really good deals at like a thousand or eleven hundred twelve hundred dollars and uh there could be an argument to be made for buying a laptop like the gigabyte g5 or something similar like around a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars and then buying a three thousand dollar desktop so you get like a eleven hundred to fifteen hundred dollar laptop and like a three thousand dollar desktop and you're gonna have in theory a little bit more performance when you're using the desktop and a little bit uh, significantly less performance when you're not. When you're traveling, it's obviously not going to be nearly as good. But um, it all comes down to your individual use case. And if you want the best overall in both situations, getting something like a really high-end laptop is very advantageous for multi-functionality and lifestyle choices, depending on who you are. So we got to change out the camera here. There we go. Let me make sure that we are live. We are indeed live. Bingo. All right. Okay. Uh, would I like to test a Dell X16? Yeah, man. I would love to test an Alienware X16. I just, uh, I just I haven't pre-ordered one. I haven't bought one yet. Uh, if I continue testing, eventually I probably will buy one. But if Dell wants to send me an Alienware X16, I will test it in the near near future. So, um, but yeah, okay. So in theory, will 64 gigs of RAM make gaming faster or possibly give you more FPS? So 64 gigs of RAM typically is not needed for modern games. 32 gigs will pretty much play every game that I know of uh, at maximum possible performance. And really what you want when you're dealing with RAM is you want fast latency and you want fast overall speed. So those two things are the things that can really boost um, your overall gaming performance. So you want something that has really quick response and then that can also process a lot of information as quickly as possible. Um, so that's the key if you're looking to upgrade. And going to 64 gigs, it's just harder for them to engineer the faster speeds and latency. So that's why 32 gigs is likely to be faster and better for gaming. Um, I think, especially when you're talking in price to performance ratio. Now, some games may want 64 gigs. Uh, games like Star Citizen maybe could benefit from more than 32. A handful of others maybe, I don't know. But like 99 percent of the games are going to be great with 32 gigs 
and most of them, like 95% of them, are going to be great with only 16 gigs. You really only need 16 for the vast majority of games. So um, it's just going to depend. Does the G18 have decent cooling? It has excellent cooling, in my opinion. It's a very well-cooled laptop. Um, which is overall better between the Blade 16 and Alienware M16 in terms of overall performance and thermals? The Alienware M16 certainly is going to have a lot better um, performance potential, but the Blade 16 is going to be pretty dang close to it. Um, and the Alienware M16 should cost quite a bit less, but the Blade 16 should be more portable. And there's, there's a lot of trade-offs going back and forth. All right, so looking at our stats, we're down to the last minute of our 10-minute test. We're averaging 4.1 gigahertz across all cores. Interesting. Our, our wattage dropped down to 95. Interesting, 99. We're throttling below 120 right now. This is the first time I've seen this on the Blade 18. I'm curious what caused this? Because our temperatures are good. We're at 82 and 89 for our CPU. Um, it seems like it just got interrupted there at the end. That's going to hurt our score. So now it's coming back up. Yeah, now we're doing 120 again. I wonder if it's because I opened up HW Info and it just deprioritized Cinebench R23. I don't know. But uh, but notice that we're, we're, we're pushing our cores back up to 4.2 gigahertz. These are very good performance numbers for our clock speeds on the CPU. Above average, even against the Strix G18, SCAR18, um, and GT77. This is right neck to neck with pretty much all of those. Um, obviously, the GT77, when we did the full undervolt and let it go ham, it did better than this, but not by a huge margin. So... Okay, uh, let's see, I'm checking out more questions here. <laughs> okay, so we're almost done. Let's see what we get. 30,000. 662, and that includes like an, that, that interruption right there. I think the score would actually be probably more like 100 points higher if we didn't have that interruption with the drop in, in uh, power limit there for a moment. But um, wow, that is incredible for a 10-minute score. Good job, Razor. I can't believe you managed to pack this much performance in something so thin and small. Um, and I'm pretty sure that Blade 16 is going to have similar-ish performance when you undervolt it too. So I'm just I'm I don't think the Blade 16 will quite match this, but it's going to be pretty dang close. So really, really phenomenal overall. Okay, um, fantastic, fan freaking tastic. I'm tempted to run a 10-minute test without any undervolting, but for the sake of moving on, I'll uh, save that for another time. Let's go ahead and get into our time spy testing. And we're gonna do a default run. And then we are going to do a, um, and then we're gonna do an overclocking run. So we're gonna overclock this laptop and see what it can do, all right? So we're not gonna do an insane overclock, detailed overclock, but we're gonna, we're gonna ramp it up until we start seeing some instability, all right? Darjan says, I guess this is over 30,500. Wow. Yeah, it did go over that. That's pretty insane. CJ says, got to run, but we'll watch the rest later. All right. See you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Glad you could, glad you could make it to the stream. Um, so TimeSpy is a benchmarking tool, in case you don't know, that can measure the power of your CPU and GPU. And it is the kind of tool that's really designed for testing mainly the GPU. Okay, it's not really a great CPU testing tool, but you can test it to kind of check your CPU stability if your under CPU undervolt works or not. And of course, I also recommend playing actual games to verify that your undervolt is working properly as well. All right, so uh, let's get Afterburner 
up. Is the Lenovo Legion 7i 12th gen price gonna drop once the new ones come out? The new ones are already out. And if there is any price drops, uh, there should already be happening. But yeah, I would say in general, you're gonna see previous gen uh, coming out uh, or previous gen laptop pricing drops. And it's already been dropping since Black Friday, basically. That's the way it works from about four months before the laptops come out. You start seeing lots and lots of sales. So uh, let's go ahead and scale this interface to be a little bit larger so you guys can see it better. All right. So you can see that right now we are at uh, plus zero overclock on the core clock for the GPU and plus zero on the memory. So no overclock currently. We are in dedicated GPU mode only. So we're not in advanced optimist mode. We're only launching on the NVIDIA GPU. Let's go ahead and run this benchmark. Did I get, I did get afterburner after burners running. This is this on it is on and it's set to seven. Let's put it to 12 and let's set this to 500. Okay, so that should be good now. Let's find out what we get in Time Spy. All right, this is the base. Then we're gonna go ahead and overclock it a little bit and see what we can get with some, I don't know, about 200 clock speed increase. Uh, Adam Swanson, welcome back to the stream. I think it would, I would go with this laptop, but still waiting on the Alienware 18 with 4090 to see how it compares. Looks like the Alienware is making an announcement on 3.2, so we might hear about the release then. So I think it's interesting that you're deciding between an Alienware uh, M18, which I believe what you're talking about, and the the Blade 18, because the, the Blade 18 is such a smaller laptop. Like the Blade 18 is almost, it's a little bit bigger than the M16, right? Um, that said, the Alienware M18, oh, hold on. Good now. Uh, the camera is starting to overheat a little bit, unfortunately. I need to. I need to buy a different. I need to buy the Sony FX3, which has active air cooling in the camera, but basically the same thing as what I've got. Um, oh, looks like my MSI afterburner is not set up correctly anymore. Let's make sure that this is all. We want all of this in there. Correct, 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 correct. And right here we need GPU temperature, usage. We'll do VRAM usage, core clock, memory clock, power percent, power, power limit. Uh, we won't do power percent. We'll do voltage limit, okay. All right, and uh, let me also make sure that we have our benchmarking set up. We do, okay, cool. All right, so let's uh, run this again. So we wanna make sure that we can monitor the stats and we can see the wattages and everything that's going on. Watch out. Trying to get the laptop position perfectly. <laughs> Can be a little hard sometimes. Okay, so checking chat again, audio desynced, okay. Um, uh, 
All right, so let me know if the audio is better now. It should be. Um, our, the GH5 is locked up right now. I'm gonna reset it. Hmm. There we go. Beautiful. All right. So uh, here we are in Time Spy. Notice that our clock speed. <laughs> A little bit delayed there getting in back in the cameras. Uh, all right. Am I going to undervolt the GPU? Uh, we're not going to undervolt the GPU. We're going to overclock it today. Um, but I think undervolting this GPU could be a pretty effective option where you can get a little bit better temperatures but similar levels of performance. All right. So um, our CPU is only pulling 39, 40 watts. Um, it's interesting because in the GT77 tests, we were pulling more like 50 to 60 watts in these kinds of tests. Now our GPU is pulling 178, 180, 190 right now. I don't know, the, the wattage there is interesting. 177, our clock speed though, is only about 2,000, 2,100, 2,800, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, as an average. So in this one, we're doing more like a little over 2000 as an average, like right around, right, right around 2025, 2050 or something. So um, our base clock, our base overclock is not as high as what MSI does on their GPUs. So it's important to just notice that right out of the gate that the GPU is not as highly tuned from the manufacturer. It's because the resolution is smaller than the GT? No, that's not true. The Time Spy will test the window at a QHD resolution window no matter what. It's always the same resolution um, inside of the benchmark window. It's always the same. Um, can the GPU even be undervolted at all? Uh, that's a great question. You can undervolt RTX GPUs. Um, using something like MSI Afterburner. Okay, so our score is 21,509. This is basically an RTX 3090 and a laptop. Freaking insane, right? Absolutely insane. The CPU score, 15,838, is also very good. Um, it can get better if you do more optimization and tweaks, but uh, since we did undervolt the CPU, we got a great score on that one as well. So this is our baseline score, 21,509, no overclock to the GPU, 15,838. These are excellent performance scores and it's really impressive, okay? So now uh, to overclock this, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a quick overclock, but basically I'm gonna run the graphics test two here and I'm gonna run it in windowed mode. I'm gonna do a looping enabled, I'm gonna run this. This is gonna give us a 3D workload to run, uh, and then we're gonna increase our memory clock and core clock. Um, now, if we were to try to undervolt this, what you would do is do control F inside of Afterburner here. And what you wanna do is make a flatline curve at whatever lower voltage uh, that you want the GPU to run at. So right now we're doing, you can see that uh, we've got 2000 megahertz and it's hitting these levels of mini volts, so our voltage. Like it's hitting right around 875, 850 for our, our voltage on the GPU. And what you'd wanna do is basically, um, for undervolting it, you'd wanna grab these, all of these lines, all of these nodes. This is our voltage curve. We would want to make that completely flat. So that way the GPU will only utilize the lower voltage level. And it may end up, we wanna to try to get kind of a stable clock speed, say around 2000. Um, and just say, use, use 2000 megahertz on the clock speed at this lower voltage level. And then in theory, it should reduce temperatures and performance. Um, 
I don't want to do any undervolting, but that's basically how you would do it. Um, and there's a lot of hotkeys that goes into doing that. And I wanna just make sure that I test everything first before I show that live on a live stream. <laughs> Cause it is a lot more complex. Overclocking the GPU itself is actually pretty easy. You download a tool like MSI Afterburner here. All right, and then uh, what you do is you just raise the core clock. So uh, we're gonna start with a core clock of 150. And for the memory, I'm pretty confident we can do 500. I haven't tried overclocking this at all. So this might actually cause instability, but I'm gonna start at 150 and 500. All right, so notice our GPU temperatures are 73 degrees, which is not that hot. And we're using 100% GPU utilization. Our memory frequency went from 9,000 to 9,501. We've got our GPU core clock now jumping up to 2200 to 2300. I saw 2300 a moment ago. It's, it's instead of dropping below 2000 now, it's resting around just above 2000. So our average GPU clock is certainly higher than it was, which is exactly what we're looking for in this GPU overclock scenario. Um, Okay, Martin asks, can you please rate the screens of all laptops you have tested with the 4000 series so far on a scale of one to 10? Um, yeah, so I would, I would give, um, if you wanna see my ratings, what I recommend, Martin, is checking out my laptop comparison list. I'll just briefly mention this. Um, so I have a ratings already applied to a bunch of laptops. And these are still very valid. I've been updating these display numbers uh, as I interact with the laptops. Um, like I lowered the GT77's display quality score uh, by 10% because it has a slower response rate. So any laptops that have a slower response rate, I'm gonna dock them 10% because of that. But, uh, but yeah, this is still very accurate. I would say the Blade 18 is the best, uh, slightly better than the Scar 18 in terms of, of performance, uh, in terms of display brightness because uh, we rated it a little bit over 100 nits brighter, or around 100 nits brighter than the SCAR-18. Um, by at least this panel that I have versus the panel that I, I had before. So, so far we're not seeing any instabilities in the Time Spy window. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna go ahead and bump the uh, core clock by another 50. So now we're at plus 200 on our core clock overclock. And we're gonna start seeing some diminishing returns as the laptop is unable to maintain certain core clocks uh, based on the voltage going through the laptop. So we're gonna end up basically um, having diminishing returns as we increase and eventually we're gonna see instability in the GPU. We're gonna see seeing artifacting in this if we raise the core clock much higher, I think. Um, so it's important to be, be moderate with what, with what overclocks you apply. Um, and to slowly, gradually increase them. And then if it is stable in a, in a, in a, in a tool like TimeSpy, then go into some really demanding games and make sure that they work in the real world. And if you use uh, your NVIDIA GPU to do like video workloads like Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, also test rendering in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere. It might, may improve your performance uh, in those applications as well. So, uh, but it also may be unstable or cause instability, your overclock might. So you'll want to do a full test of everything that you do on your laptop um, to ensure stability. And so a good game to test with is something that's gonna demand 100% of your GPU utilization, uh, as well as hopefully hit your CPU a little bit as well. So um, looks like we're having no stability issues with this level of overclock. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bump the memory frequency. I'm going to just go ahead and just, I'm just going to go straight to a thousand because the GT77 was able to do 1400 stably. So, oh, we can't go that high. It prevents us from going up to a thousand. Um, probably something in the, the V BIOS is like, Hey, you can't overclock the memory that high. Okay. So we can go to 900. Okay. So we can go to a thousand. All right. So now we have got 200 core clock OC on the GPU and 1000 on the memory. Let's see if we run into any artifacting or issues. A link please to the display test. Uh, just go a little bit further back in the live stream. We just did it like a half hour ago or something like that, around a half hour ago. 
Okay, so uh, overall, I'm seeing some nice improvement. I have yet to see any kind of instability. Uh, and I'm not seeing too much improvement on the core clock. It's, it's kind of not going up much. So I don't think increasing the core clock is actually going to help us at all anymore. Once you've, once you've uh, got a core clock and memory clock that you're happy with for your overclock, uh, I would recommend saving this in a slot over here so I can hit the save button and select one. So now this is saved as preset one. And you can also save like a zero, zero, like stock preset. And then you can uh, have this boot up in, in Windows and boot up in like the pre -slot, preset one. So that way your overclock is applied every time that you boot into Windows. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and give the laptop a moment to cool down uh, just a little bit. Run, let it, the fans run for like, I don't know, 30 seconds or something. Uh, and then we'll try a time spy test. Do a rating on your tested GPU laptop at basic factory. Yeah, we did that. We just did that a minute ago. So just go back in the live stream like five minutes, 10 minutes ago. We just did that. Um, we got 21,000, like 580 or something like that. The best is the GT Titan with no backlight bleed and super bright like an OLED. Yeah, it, the Titan display is the best I've seen so far, except for the screen response rate being slower. So that's the, that's the caveat with that display. It's an incredible display, but not good for esports games. It'll, it'll work for esports games, but it just won't. You'll notice the slower response rate if you're a competitive player. I'll, that's pretty much what I'll say. Um, is this better than the Strix SCAR in terms of heat, noise level, temperature, performance, and sustained performance? Uh, no, I would say the SCAR is likely to have slightly uh, well, I would say this has better noise level, but I would say the SCAR is going to likely have better temperatures and slightly higher sustained performance, especially when you're under a dual CPU GPU load. The CPU will be able to take a lot higher wattage at the same time as the GPU. So like a sustained combined load will be higher. With the SCAR 18, we were seeing some combined loads of like 270 watts in games like Hogwarts and Dead Space. So I don't think this laptop is capable of doing that. Probably more like 240, 250, somewhere in that range. We haven't done the test yet. I haven't played those games. Oh, I played Hogwarts a little bit, but I wasn't seeing that high of a wattage pull. So that's why I'm saying that. Okay, so uh, we're gonna have crappy audio for a minute, guys. The um, unfortunately, unfortunately, we're gonna have some crappy audio for a minute because the uh, laptop is uh, my camera is overheating right now. So. Um, like I said, I need to upgrade my camera to the FX3, so it's it's on my to-do list. All right, so we're running Time Spy now with our overclock enabled on the GPU, and we're gonna see how many more points we can get. I'm hoping that we're gonna go above 22,000 on the Time Spy. That's that's my goal. All right. Um, so notice our wattage is not jumping up to the 175. It's kind of warming up to that. Our clock speeds are hitting up to 2200 megahertz now, which is good. That's better. That's basically what the GT77 uh, baseline was. And uh, yeah, our notice the fans on this machine are not that loud yet. And yet we are still only seeing 70 degree temps on the GPU during this overclock. 76 on the CPU. This thing is doing a really good job of keeping the CPU and GPU cooled overall. It's just not, my only complaint is really that the, the GPU wattage is just not locked to that 175 and it's probably hurting our uh, potential scores and potential frame rates by like five to 10%, probably like 5% or something, compared to something like the GT77. 
Um, why is the GT77 only 87.5% in display quality? I said that, uh, I, I mentioned that a moment ago, Martin, it's because I took 10% off for the slower response rate display. That's why. Because um, I, I need to make sure I factor that in. Um, having a slower response rate display on a gaming laptop is not good. So, so if you're a casual gamer that doesn't need quick response rate, the GT77 is probably the best display out there. If you're an eSports gamer that wants a really fast response rate display, I would say skip the GT77 4K 144Hz. Um, Guala Guala, am I being crazy or the Scar 18 without RGB looks better than the Blade? Uh, and you can take it to work? No, you could definitely, the Scar 18 looks pretty good without any RGB, and you could definitely take that laptop to work. Um, it looks very businessy with the, all of the RGB off. So I don't know if it looks better than the Blade, but it's, it still looks good. Talon's testing the Legion 7i Pro. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, I'm sure you'll post it to the uh, Reddit gaming laptops uh, subreddit, and I'll, I'll probably see your results on there, Talon. But can I please run Speedway? I've never ran Speedway. Is that another uh, 3D Mark test? So notice our, we were only pulling about 95 watts right there in that CPU test, it's interesting. Blade 18 versus Scar 18 comparison? Yeah, Carlos, I'd like to be able to do, to do that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Our CPU score went up too. So, that's impressive. 22,235 for our graphics score. 16,351 for our, our overall uh, CPU score, which is even higher than the GT77. That is incredible for a thin laptop talent. Yeah, that is that is really good for a laptop that's this thin and this brought down. So, like in terms of in terms of size, um, I don't have Speedway downloaded, Britt Allen, but I will try to look into it. I don't see it here as an option. Oh, there it is. You're talking about right here. Upgrade required. Yeah, so I haven't bought it yet. I'd have to. I'd have to buy that. Um, but maybe I'll consider it. Uh, I just don't see anyone else using that right now. So that's the reason why I'm not really using it. All right. So now that we have undervolted our CPU and we have overclocked our GPU, let's see if our overclock and underclock is stable in a game like Hogwarts Legacy. So let's go ahead and get in here and uh, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get some wizard rubs on. audio good let me know if the audio is uh, synced correctly but huzzah we are ready to re-enter Hogwarts once again so these are my Ravenclaw robes let's go all right <laughs> all right Uh, 
So I'm going to put the mic facing towards the speakers so you can hear them a little better. And I'm playing on my actual uh, main Hogwarts account that I have all the upgraded stuff. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of sections of Hogwarts. There's this nice battle section. It's like a battle drill, so it'll be a nice combat. You guys can see the combat in, after you unlock a bunch of stuff. Oh, nice to see you, my young friend. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, I'm pressing the wrong buttons, okay. Expelliarmus. All right, so let me go ahead and, uh, so you can see the average FPS. Um, right now, my settings that I have on, I actually set the my NVIDIA DLSS down to performance because I thought it looked a little uh, smoother, but um, we'll set it to quality to be consistent with my previous live streams. So DLSS to quality, frame generation is on. We have uncapped frame rate. Everything is set to ultra with ray tracing enabled, okay? You get a nice FPS boost if you turn off ray tracing. It's like 40% or something increased FPS. It's a huge jump. So, but we have it on. We'll test it with it on. Um, okay, so our CPU is getting a little, little toasty, but our frame rate is nice. And our 1% lows are looking pretty good so far. I've never been over here. What is this? Oh, there's some kind of trial. I don't know. I don't have it unlocked yet, so I can't do it. I think the place I want to go to is down here. I've got two broom upgrades. I haven't gotten the third broom upgrade. You can go faster in this game. If you upgrade it more. Okay, so we're gonna do the battle arena. This is a pretty sweet area. You can like basically try to survive as long as you can. Did I undervolt before benchmark? Yes, I did. Oh, he got me. Whoa, he, he just teleported and hit me in the face. What is that? Ow. This game is a lot like Elden Ring in that you have to time all of your uh, attacks. Okay, so we killed the first troll. I'm gonna go and fight some guys in the second wave. Um, so you can see what some bad guy variety is like in this game. Uh, so, got a bunch of wolves. It's 
Sweet. So we are able to beat all of them. Uh, I guess I'll play one more wave. Those are quick. I keep getting hit by this goblin in the back. Okay, sweet. So there's uh, there's some some examples. What game is this? This is Hogwarts Legacy. So it's a really, it's a fun game. I've been enjoying it a lot. Um, Gizmo is the Hogwarts king. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really fun game. Um, this is distinctly different, so we can't really do a benchmark comparison right now between this and the other laptops because I'm not on the same account. Uh, but I just want to show you a couple of games. We're going to also load into Cyberpunk. 2077, so let's see what we get in the benchmark. We'll be able to do a little better comparison with that one. Uh, Roman wants to know, what's my opinion on the Scar 18, Blade 18, best suited for Apex Legends? They're both going to be excellent for Apex Legends. They're both going to be great. So um, if, you, if you want a laptop for Apex Legends, then it should not be a problem uh, with either one. They should both be able to hit 240 hertz, uh, 240 FPS on the QHD refresh rate display. So, I'm gonna turn down the sound a little bit for this game. There we go. Okay, so. Uh, Technicolor tube says very impressive GPU temperatures. Looks like it can sustain 210 watts. Uh, yeah, so we weren't in the most demanding CPU area. Um, so that's just what it was doing in the general area of the map. And I would say that uh, you're not going to see how you say. You should expect. Um, you should expect more wattage to happen in other areas of the of the map, um, like Hogsmeade. So now that we're not in Hog, uh, Harry Potter anymore, I'm gonna go ahead and take them off my robes because it's really hot <laughs> with these robes on. It's like a winter jacket, pretty much. Okay. Um, all right, so going into our settings here, we'll go to full screen. We're at QHD+, plus. we're on Ray Tracing Ultra. We're gonna turn frame generation on we're gonna set DLSS to quality. And so basically ray tracing ultra, DLSS to quality, uh, QHD plus. Let's go ahead and run the benchmark and we'll see what we get. This should be something that's gonna be very comparable with the other laptops in the segment. Um, and let me see what we got on the SCAR 18 in this same test. Let's go do 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 right here. So checking. No. Let's pause that. Uh All right, I I was my averages were messed up there, but um, okay. So the Scar eighteen got one hundred and sixteen point two five with a min FPS of forty five. So so one sixteen forty five. Let's see what this gets. It's probably going to be just a hair under or very similar, maybe a little more actually, maybe because uh, it, we do have an overclock. Right, so I wouldn't be surprised.
How much is the difference in be- uh hold on a second. All right, so we got 12043. So this was just a little bit slower than the Scar 18 in the same test. Um about uh what was that? 5 FPS, right? So yeah, 116 versus 1 wait. Oh, this is a little faster. Oh. This is 4 FPS faster than the Scar 18. We are in an overclock right now. This is not factory. The Scar 18 was had a small overclock, I think 50 and 100. So this has a little bit more of an overclock, but we got four FPS more on the average, about the same on the min, 45 versus 43. So very impressive. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and load into Cyberpunk and just run around for a minute. Maybe steal a car and drive around, so we can see what we get in just general gameplay. Do you think running the fans constantly at 80% would be a problem? Uh, no, uh, I just wouldn't recommend leaving them overnight like that, running all the time. But anytime you're actively using the laptop, playing with it, that should be fine. Between the Razer 18, Scar 18, and GT77, which one's the best for 3D modeling? All three of them should be great, but I think the GT77 display would be a little better for 3D modeling. Um, So, all right, so I'm gonna, I just started the average FPS counter up here. Let's see what we get when we run around. Oh my God. Why can't I sprint? Okay. We are a terror. Can I get in here? I don't know why I can't get in. There we go, okay. Turning my sound up now. So this, this is an excellent overall gameplay experience for just using the speakers on the machine. If you, if you wanna have no headphones and you just wanna have the speakers on the machine, it's great. Oh my gosh. Name's Dino. Deal with doubt. Finish this another time. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and as you were saying. You don't know me, but you will be. Yeah, I know. Heard about you. Hot stuff. <laughs> okay. Anything you call me. Let me see if I can uh load into another part of the game. Let's try this part. Are there any downsides of a stable undervolt? I don't think so, Matthias. As long as your undervolt is stable, it's, I think, as far as I know, it's only upsides. Don't see any movement on the sensors. Looks like you got them. Clear to go. Oh, this. Shit, where the hell's our target? This is, uh. We can't do this section. This section has nudity. <laughs> I gotta back up a little more. Uh, let's see here. All right, this is, this section has a cool section to uh, to watch.
Okay, sorry about that. I don't know, one of my things died. All right, All right. so, so you, you should, should... You should have audio now. Um, so we're gonna hop into Apex Legends and we're gonna do a match and we're gonna see what kind of FPS we can get. All right, so firing range. Just showing you how we're testing it. We're testing it with uh, anti-aliasing on, with high textures, everything else is set to low or off. Right now the laptop display is at 50% brightness. <laughs> It's crazy. Uh, Vlad, Vlad is live. Can you show frame generation on and off? I will do that in the live benchmarking. We're not going to do that right now, though. Um, just because I'm trying to move through three games rather than spend all my time on one game doing a bunch of different tests. So, all right. So you can see our average FPS up here is 295. Obviously very, very good FPS. All right, so here we go. I'm not a very good angle to do this, but it is, this screen is super fast response rate. This game is playing exceptionally smooth. We're just basically locked at our 300 FPS cap. Uh, this game cannot go higher than 300 FPS, which does not make any sense to me. I wish it could go higher. I did just accidentally shoot with the touchpad. So this is definitely a game where you'd want to disable the touchpad so you don't do accidental presses. Okay, so very nice. Let's go ahead and go back to the lobby. Uh, you do not hear my answer. Which one would I pick, the Razor Blade 18 or Scar 18? Um, I think it just depends on uh, what you want as a person. And I think most people I think most people would love either laptop, both the Scar 18 or the Razer Blade 18. So I, I, really, think, I really think that uh, it's got a tremendous potential no matter which laptop you pick. Um, are you gonna keep the GT77 or prefer another one for esports? I am going to be playing, uh, I'm definitely gonna return the GT77. I'm not keeping the GT77 because of the slow response rate display. Is there a screen flickering issue still there? Yes, it is. Uh, it, it is an issue if you are in advanced optimus mode right now. The Intel, the Intel integrated GPU driver is messing up, causing a screen to flicker. So I'm in dedicated GPU mode. And uh, that's why. It's the, the, the flicker is not bad at all for me right now. Uh, or sorry, I, the, the flicker does not exist. Um, as far as I can tell, in discrete mode. I'm being destroyed. Ah! So this is team deathmatch mode. It's a rather uh, hectic and crazy mode where you constantly fight and respawn. So I figured it'd be good to show you guys um, that over and over. And I've got the average FPS running now. I just refreshed it.
This is a pretty sweet loadout with the, uh, the G7 Scout and the Wingman. I'm gonna die. Woo! Intel iGPU drivers were also bad at the launch of the 11th and 12th gen. It's a recurring issue. They fix it. Yeah, that's uh, that's the plan. That's my knowledge. That's my knowledge that it's uh, the Intel drivers are going to be fixed, and I anticipate the speaker issue that I encountered will also be fixed. Well, two on one, I managed to kill two of them. So we're averaging 275 FPS, 165 right now. It's, uh, our teammate is, our teammates aren't doing very well. <laughs> How about the Aura 17H, cheapest option for a 4080? Um, yeah, so I think it's gonna be pretty good. There's a link to a review on the 17H on the sheet. So if you're looking for a review, I recommend looking that up. Um, I think it's by Kit Guru, and the laptop does seem pretty good, but it's not like amazing, you know. That's the thing. I'm gonna die if I say that. All right, so we're gonna wrap up games here and do a summary. Oh, I think he died to my teammate. Um, so we're gonna get one more kill if we can and then we'll uh, end this game play. I'm about to die. Yikes. Uh, Mr. Alexander, yeah, I'm looking for a review suite. Thanks, I'll look into it since I don't have a 4K to sync to a laptop. Yeah, um, I think the Omen 17 and the Aura 17H were the two cheapest um, RTX 4000 series laptops or 4080 laptops. And they look pretty promising. Um, they don't look... There's definitely sacrifices that you're making if you're getting those laptops, though. Okay, so that'll count as our review, uh, so our our kill. We got 280 FPS on average, 167 for 1% lows. Overall, excellent performance here in Apex Legends. Phenomenal. All right. So. To summarize. Let me grab this guy, and pull it up here. All right. So, overall, I am really loving the Blade 18 so far. I am leaning towards making it my primary laptop this year. It's not gonna be quite as high performance as the Scar 18 or GT77. Definitely not, especially in high levels of GPU, CPU, crossload, dual load type of scenarios like in Dead Space or certain areas of Hogwarts where we saw up to 270 watts of power through the Scar 18 and, um, that said, we still am getting very good performance with the Blade 18 and uh, good enough to where you're gonna have a great gameplay at this QHD resolution. It can play eSports games at QHD 240 hertz really, really well. Um, the overall chassis doesn't get as hot. Uh, it's still warm right here. The bottom middle does get hot, um, but the sides, the touchpad and the keyboard rest doesn't get as hot as say the, um, the Blade 16. The Blade 16 gets a bit warmer, which can be a little more uncomfortable. Um, the speakers on this, phenomenal. Display on this, phenomenal. The keyboard backlight is really, really great. The keyboard uh, feel is really good. Arrow keys need to be changed, I think, but the, the extra functionality row across the top is fantastic. The flex on this, fantastic. Very little flex. Um, some upgradability, you can change out the RAM, you can change out two SSDs. Um, this is gonna be more portable 
than your than in any other 18 inch laptop. It's it's really impressive what Razer has done with this machine. We're going to be doing a full live benchmarks live stream with this coming up in the near future. We're going to test uh, like 15 to 20 games with it. We're going to be able to compare. Comp uh, we're going to be able to do detailed performance comparisons with the other laptops like the Scar 18 and the GT77. Um, I'm going to do a live benchmarks live stream with the MSI GT77 soon. So if you want to be able to check out those live streams, please uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and come back for more content. And know that there is an option to become a member to support the channel as well. So I'm going to check chat, see if you have any other questions. Um, did I elevate the laptop a little bit from the desk? Yes, I did. There is a about a half inch up on the back. Um, Mr. Alexander says, what about the faster RAM speed of the blades? Is it noticeable? Uh, we need to do detailed benchmark testing to see if we can notice a difference in CPU sensitive games and memory sensitive games. Uh, Martin says, do you think, for example, the Helios 18 will have a better screen than the GT77? Uh, there will definitely be a faster screen with mini LED. Yeah, so the, the Helios 18 should be a better eSports display. That's a large screen format factor. So if you want a mini LED large screen, Going with the Predator Helios 18 with mini LED is probably the way to go because it's also 250 hertz refresh rate, should be much faster response rate. So um, that'll be a better blend of all the different aspects for the screen than, um, than the GT77's 4K 144 hertz, but it has a slower response rate. So um, Mr. Alexander says, yeah, I know, but I want don't want to wait for a 4070 laptop since I do some data science on the side and smaller than 19... 192 bit lane bus is worrying me. So it'll be the Aura 17 or Omen. Thanks for the telling. Uh, thanks for telling me on the side. All right. Um, can you put the 16 on top of it and see the size difference? Uh, Brandon Rubio, I did that earlier in the live stream. Go back. I compared the size of the Blade 18 versus all the other laptops that I have here on hand. Um, will the performance in the Blade 18 and Alienware M18 be similar or will the M18 have much better performance in cooling? The M18 will have noticeably better performance in cooling almost for sure, but it's also gonna be massively larger. It's gonna be, uh, I think it's even bigger than the GT77 and this thing, yeah, the, it's, I think the Alienware M18 is currently the largest overall laptop size out of any laptop this year so far. Can I show the BIOS? Um, the BIOS in this is extremely minimal, Britt Allen. There's almost no point in showing the BIOS. It's just very bare bones. You can change the MUX switch in it, and that's about it. So not really much point in showing the BIOS. Um, which app do you use for CPU undervolting? I did Intel XTU, Mitch, and I went through a full detailed explanation on how to undervolt this thing, and we got additional CPU performance from undervolting, which was a very impressive level of performance. Our 10-minute test was 30,600. So... Guala says, how is the cooling and health noise levels between the Razer and the Scar? Uh, the Razer is a quieter laptop, but the Scar can put out higher levels of performance, especially if you crank the fans to max on both of them. The Scar 18 can do higher levels of performance, uh, but not like a huge difference. We got to actually measure it, but I'm thinking between 5 and 10% difference, so depending on the game. Um, or very, very similar. And like the Cyberpunk 2077 test, the Blade 18 actually got higher FPS because we overclocked it. So depending on the game, it may be exactly the same levels of FPS between the Blade 18 and the Scar 18. And the Blade 18 actually has faster RAM. So in certain games that are memory sensitive, the Blade 18 will probably actually outperform the Scar 18. But in the heavy dual loaded games like Dead Space, I'm anticipating the Scar 18 outperforming the Blade 18 because it can handle a higher dual CPU GPU load. So it's just going to depend on the game, which laptop's going to be faster. Uh, Mr. Alexander says, are you able to change RAM speed in the BIOS? Not that I know of. How do you get more performance from undervolting the CPU? Less power, more outcome. It's because of increasing the power efficiency. Undervolting makes the laptop more power efficient. Um, yeah. Which company is the most reliable? I, that's, Ro that's really hard to know, Roman. Um, my recommendation typically is to get yourself an extended warranty if you're gonna keep that laptop for a long period of time and you know you're gonna keep it. So, so yeah. So that's gonna be the live stream for today, guys. I hope I was able to answer all of your questions. I tried to check chat a bunch of times, um, but feel free to ask any comments. Feel free to ask any questions in comments later on and I'll try to respond to those as well. 
Um, yeah, and we're going to be next live stream is going to be the MSI GT77 uh, live benchmarking live stream. So come back for those benchmarks. So Britt says no bio settings is sad. There's, there's very few bio settings. Yes. Okay. All right. See you guys in the next one. Brandon out.